Nothing quite says all American like a huge pickup truck. Popular one from Ford, the Mustang. Well, also very all American and very popular. So kind of an apt way to kick off our coverage of the 2019 New York Auto Show. Speaking of kickoffs, well, the show itself gets started by first hosting the World Car Awards. So before anything out here on the show stands, I want to take you downstairs to the special events area and take you through the big winners and this year's ceremony. annual World Car of the Year is the biggest, most prestigious automobile awards program on the planet and it has only been gaining in prominence and prestige the past few years. This year saw some very strong cars compete in what has been the biggest year in terms of the number of nominees and the number of jurors representing every major automobile market worldwide. After the annual test drives in Los Angeles in November 2018, the new year began with the first round of voting followed by the over 50 nominees being whittled down to the top 5 in all categories and top 10 for the World Car of the Year. The second round got us the top 3 announced in Geneva in March and then it was time for the final results. The world's top journalists and auto industry executives gathered in New York at the annual auto show's opening at the awards breakfast ceremony and it began with the World Car Design of the Year. Good morning to all of you, a very warm welcome from all of us at the World Car Awards. World Car Design of the Year 2019, the Jaguar I-Pace. The I-Pace beat the Suzuki Jimny and Volvo XC40 to win design. It then also won its second award. World Green Car is a double winner. Jaguar I-Pace. The I-Pace won the Green Car Award by beating the Audi e-tron and the Hyundai Nexo. Next, it was the performance car of the year. The winner of the 2019 World Performance Car Award is the McLaren, the 720S. The McLaren 720S stayed ahead of the Aston Martin Vantage and the Mercedes AMG GT four-door coupe. The Suzuki Jimny. After two years of playing runner-up in the urban category, Suzuki had its first ever win at the World Car Awards. It beat the Hyundai Centro and the Kia Soul. In fact, it was ahead of the Kia Soul by just two points. The World Luxury Car category this year is the Audi A7. The Audi A7 won ahead of the Audi Q8 and the BMW 8 Series. And the World Car of the Year saw history being made. The 2019 World Car of the Year is the Jaguar I Pace. The first ever triple win by any car. The Jaguar I-Pace is a standout winner for sure. The 
2019 New York International Auto Show has its usual mix of world and North American debuts. The most significant and of relevance to us were the small SUV, the Hyundai Venue, and the very large one, the Mercedes-Benz GLS. Now, the second generation GLS had also debuted in New York in 2012, and now we have the third gen. The new car is wider, longer, and offers more cabin space than the last one. It also gets the latest from Mercedes including e-active body control with an adaptive air suspension, the latest MBUX interface and touch screen, and that goes without saying. And that third row looks way more comfortable now. The brand also showed us the facelifted GLC Coupe after the regular GLC facelift was revealed last month in Geneva. You have already seen the Hyundai Venue getting revealed in India and it is certainly getting a lot of attention here in New York too. This sub 4 meter SUV is finding appeal even in America, where too now buyers are increasingly looking for more compact cars. The new 8th generation Hyundai Sonata has also debuted at New York. There is no word on whether or not India will get this car, though it seems unlikely. A pronounced coupe silhouette and very unusual DRLs that run up the hood are prominent features of what Hyundai is calling its sensuous sportiness design. Hyundai's premium brand Genesis surprised New York with this, the mint concept car. With the Mint concept, the whole idea here for Genesis is also what's happening with a lot of premium brands where uh, the idea is to go more compact because that's where the market's shifting. That's where a lot of the people are looking to stay premium and yet be practical. A small city car like that, which could be electrically driven and which would still bring in a different kind of an audience, seems to go right to the heart of where the market is shifting as well. The Mint uses a similar platform as the Hyundai Veloster and most significantly also indicates where Genesis design is going. The American brands were as usual showing off their very best, be it the pickups, SUVs or their muscle cars. And there were also some new cars like the Lincoln Corsair compact SUV, the Cadillac CT5 sedan or indeed Ford's new Escape compact SUV. But it is this special display that Cadillac dedicated to its historical use of the tail fin in its cars that gets my attention. The first tail fin appeared in 1948 and besides the small model display showing the various cars to use it over the years, also on display in its full regal splendor is this 1959 Eldorado Biarritz convertible sitting high above all other cars. Volkswagen is showing off the R design line of its SUVs. The one we care about is the Tiguan though and here's why. So you heard it here first. This is new exclusive information that we've just received about the Volkswagen Tiguan. Now, in some markets, this car is called the All Space. In others, it's called the Long Wheelbase Tiguan. Here in the US, just Tiguan because this is the only one they get. But yes, this is the extended wheelbase. So it's larger than the car that we have in India, which is, of course, the two-row car. Now, that's pretty much like the Kodiak from Škoda. Yes, the two cars share a lot. And so that's the whole idea of bringing in this larger three-row version to India. Nissan has a special connection to New York, always choosing it to toast the legendary GTR. Its 50th anniversary edition debuts here in blue, but also on display are some of its previous generations and this. So it is kind of fitting to have this car here as well, given that this whole 50th anniversary theme kind of dominates the Nissan stand. Now, it's not a concept car, if you haven't seen it before, this is what Nissan showed at Goodwood last year. Ital Designs tribute to the 50 years of the GTR and 50 of these will be made and sold at a price you don't want to know about. The part you do want to know is 720 horses under that hood.
Nissan is also celebrating 50 years of the 370Z with the Datsun 240Z from 1969 standing next to the current car. Rivian is also getting so much interest worldwide. The Amazon-backed electric SUV maker sure is getting attention here too for its R1S SUV and R1T pickup truck. Jaguar Land Rover may have brought its XC sedan to New York with an updated interior. The stand clearly belongs to the triple winner, the I-Pace. Really historic day for Jaguar Land Rover with those three wins. Now, there's one car that's pretty much a shoe in as a nominee at least for the 2020 World Urban Car. I'm standing next to it. This is the all new first ever Hyundai Venue. It's a global debut that's happening here at the New York Auto Show for this subcompact SUV. But of course, in the run up to its reveal here, there's been so much talk about it back home. You've got little bits and snippets, you've seen the car undergoing testing and uh, well now it's finally here and there was a simultaneous reveal event that was held not quite on land back home as well so Ame and Ike was there and has all the details for you. The subcompact SUV segment has grown by 23% last year. More than 2 lakh units sold in that segment. How could Hyundai India stay away from that? Which is why the answer to that question is this. Yes, it's the venue. It's the new subcompact SUV from the company. And uh, well, it will take on the likes of the Tata Nexon, the Maruti Suzuki, Vitara Brezza and even the Mahendra XUV 300 and first up it looks pretty good because it's different from all the subcompact SUVs that you have seen in that segment uh, completely different in terms of design actually sticking to that uh, fluidic sculpture design from uh, Hyundai so that is why you have these slim uh, indicators up here and you have uh, well the headlamps the, these are projector headlamps down here of course uh, it's sticking to those norms uh, of you know the LEDs up on top and uh, the, the headlamp housings down below. Of course, you have uh, fog lamps as well down below, and then you have this massive uh, front grille which you see. It is, this is actually a chrome mesh, and this will be a feature of most of the cars that are coming from uh, Hyundai uh, from now. All of it, it, it's got a nice sculpted bonnet as well lovely looking lines there and uh, all around if you see there's that one nice detail that you have it's it's got nice little lines and yeah most of them are for aerodynamism but it's about you know just making things better and making that design better so that is why you see that one line flowing right from here begins from here and going right up behind and then uh, uh, again getting into the tail of the car so overall quite the looker in fact in this segment and uh, definitely one of the better looking ones and we are sure that we'll see more such design language from the company very soon but now let's get to the back and uh, check out what it's all about as well So the lines from up front continue at the rear so you can see this beautiful character line which comes right from the front all around right here. Then you have these small looking tail lamps. Now this we also managed to tell you even in our Santro review that the tail lamps actually are smaller and I mean they look a bit disproportionate but this one actually it, it doesn't look that much. Uh, these are of course LED tail lamps on offer and uh, overall look pretty good on the car. Some might say that it looks 
uh, identical to probably the Volkswagen Polo and that makes the rear a little Polo-ish as well but uh, overall you can see the detailing is really nice and once you open the boot there's enough and more space for uh, four to five bags at least and of course you get the rear seat which is a uh, which is a foldable one so uh, you, it's, it's a 60 40 split which is why you can just put it down and there's more space on offer so all in all it's a great package and uh, certainly something that you'll enjoy so let's get inside the car and get to know the interiors now we start at the back of the car because well that's where uh, rear seat passengers are going to be right so you have uh, the rear AC vents right here but there is no USB here usually there should be but there is no USB here there's just a charging point uh, for all your needs overall uh, good space here uh, this this seat is uh, according to my preference my driving preference so a little bit of uh, well uh, I don't have much space here but still it's good enough I mean I can sit like this and it, it's pretty okay uh, the seats are all right as well the sloping roof makes a bit of a difference now there's a, there's a bit of a scoop here behind me uh, but which increases a bit of uh, headroom that I have but anyone taller than me and that should be a problem then you have these, these cup holders right here and uh, these two are really nice you obviously cannot operate the infotainment system from here but overall space and even thigh uh, in thigh support and even the seat quality is extremely good so well done overall and uh, plastic quality really looks nice so what's what we'll do right now is get into the front seat and check out what features it has on offer Well, the front seat has a lot to offer and uh, well right from the steering wheel which is extremely proportionate to uh, well, all the features that you have on offer. Now at the main command center is this 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system which has everything you want right from uh, Android Auto to Apple CarPlay to even navigation in fact. And uh, of course with the Blue Link app you have a lot more because like geofencing, there is SOS alert, there is tow alert everything that you can think of in a connected car and that's what makes uh, the venue a very very special car but uh, let's talk about even how it looks up front I mean uh, th though this looks like it's soft, soft touch material it isn't it's just hard plastic and it's the fit and finish is actually really nice and uh, you touch and feel it it looks uh, really good in fact feels also really good as well now the seat here there's a nice little dead pedal because uh, this is the automatic transmission that they have which is again in-house uh, developed in-house by Hyundai so uh, all in all a really nice and spacious look to the car uh, really good uh, feel of the steering as well uh, dials in fact are digital and analog something that you've seen in the Creta already uh, you also get climate control uh, and uh, of course the AC vents and there are two USB ports up front and a charging center so all in all really good space here but the biggest thing that this one gets is a sunroof up top and uh, that, that's pretty good for the people who are looking for a subcompact SUV with a sunroof. Overall looks good we can't wait to drive it and that is because new engine on offer and that's what we are going to talk about next so let's go ahead and check out what that engine is all about. Well, the engine we are talking about is the new 1 litre turbocharged engine and uh, well there it is it's smaller but a more powerful version 118 brake horsepower coming out of that and uh, there are two petrol and one diesel on offer uh, so this one is the more powerful version the other is an 82 brake horsepower version so the the challenge will be for the company to make this happen so that this goes into other cars in the country we can't wait to drive this one and tell you more about it. <laughs> 